Thank you, dear. Touch me again, I'll drown you faster. You loved them on the big screen. But did you also love them in print? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies most people don't know were based on books. I'm somebody now, Harry. Everybody likes me. Soon, millions of people will see me and they'll all like me. For this list, we're looking at films that the average moviegoer would be surprised to find out were books before they hit the big screen. However, we're excluding adaptations of Shakespeare's works, like 10 Things I Hate About You, since we already have a list for that. I hate the way you talk to me and the way you cut your hair. I hate the way you drive my car. I hate it when you stare. Number 10. How to Train Your Dragon Based on How to Train Your Dragon by Cressida Cowell You got it, buddy. This Oscar-nominated animated film set in an exciting world of Vikings and dragons may have won points with critics and audiences alike, but mega points should go to the English children's author behind the movie. Not so fireproof on the inside, are you? There you go. The Adventures of Hiccup are actually contained in a series of 12 novels, the first of which was published in 2003 and officially ended with the last book in 2015. Thank you for summing that up. Who knows what other films we have in store from this exhilarating series? All we know is if Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III and his Night Fury Toothless can keep making us laugh, it's bound to be good. Sorry! That's my fault. Number 9. The Exorcist based on The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. What an excellent day for an exorcism. You'd like that? Considered one of the best horror films in history, this supernatural scarefest, directed by William Friedkin, was actually based on an equally successful novel. Where's Reagan? In here with us. Inspired by a real-life 1949 exorcism in an alleged case of demonic possession, this 1971 novel ended up hitting the New York Times bestseller list, and it wasn't long before Blatty took the idea to Hollywood, becoming both the film's producer and writer of the screenplay. Is there someone inside you? Sometimes. Who is it? I don't know. Despite experiencing production trouble, Blatty's masterpiece became one of the highest grossing films in history, and was even selected by the Library of Congress to be preserved as part of the National Film Registry in 2010. The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! Number 8. Forrest Gump. Based on Forrest Gump by Winston Groom. Before being turned into an Academy Award-winning movie that's almost as quoted today as when it came out, the 1986 novel of the same name sold only 30,000 copies. Nevertheless, from humble literary beginnings came one of the most lovable cinematic characters of the 90s. My mom always said, life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. The film did gloss over some of the events and rougher aspects of Gump's life as portrayed in the book, but we're just glad that Paramount went with Tom Hanks over the author's preferred choice of John Goodman for the iconic role. It wouldn't have been the same without him. Have you found Jesus yet? No. I didn't know I was supposed to be looking for him, so. Number 7. Jaws. Based on Jaws by Peter Benchley. Oh, boys! I think he's come back for his noon feeding. Did you know that what's arguably the first summer blockbuster ever, and one of Spielberg's finest films, had its origins in the mind of a struggling American freelance writer? Well, we didn't know. Inspired by Benchley's interest in and research on shark attacks, his 1974 novel quickly became a bestseller, and stayed so for about 11 months. Look, the situation is that apparently a great white shark has staked a claim in the waters off Amity Island and he is going to continue to feed here as long as there is food in the water. It wasn't long before the story of the lone great white shark and the three men who try to catch it caught the eye of some mega movie producers, leading to the highest grossing film in history up to that point. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Number 6. Pitch Perfect Based on Pitch Perfect, The Quest for Collegiate Acapella Glory by Mickey Rapkin. Um, excuse me, mm -hmm. but you guys are gonna get pitch slapped so hard your man boobs are gonna concave. It's hard enough to believe that this winning musical comedy came from the pages of any book, but a non-fiction one? Seriously? Yes, seriously. But I really need to see it, Becca. 
Sure enough, though, this funny film about two opposing a cappella groups, the Barden Bellas and the Treblemakers, was inspired by the author's season spent covering competitive a cappella at three different universities. With pages chock full of stories about singing, groupies, partying, and rivalries, it's not hard to see how this exhilarating account has turned into the film Many Love, as well as the second highest grossing musical comedy film of all time. Sorry, it just is pretty lame. Ah, uh, excuse me? Synchronized lady dancing to a Mariah Carey chart topper is not lame. Number 5. Scarface, based on Scarface by Armitage Trail. Say hello to my little friend! Any fan of the violent 1983 remake of the 1932 crime film must pay due respect and say hello to its little friend, the 1929 crime novel they were adapted from. I don't even like this place. It's kind of gaudy, isn't it? Ain't it though? Glad you like it. Loosely based on the life of gangster Al Capone, the novel came from the mind of a young crime writer who died just a year after the novel was published. However, we can thank him for the charismatic, unpredictable Tony Montana, whose literary counterpart was named Tony Camonti. You want to give me the cash? Or do I kill your brother first? Before I kill you. That character will remain timeless due to Al Pacino's unforgettable performance in a classic that's been cited by some as the best mob movie ever put to film. Me? I always tell the truth. Even when I lie. Number 4. First Blood. Based on First Blood by David Morrell. It's over, Johnny. It's over! Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off! Although almost universally praised upon its release in 1972, this violent book about the life of a Vietnam War vet passed through countless film studios, companies, and drafts before finally catching the eye of two young aspiring producers looking for their big break. I've been telling you the law out here, it's me. Don't push it. Don't push it, I'll give you a war you won't believe. With the likes of Robert De Niro, Clint Eastwood, and Steve McQueen considered for the character, Sylvester Stallone was eventually cast as John Rambo in what would become one of his defining roles. They drew first blood, not me. Although it initially received mixed reviews, the movie has since become a cult classic and has spawned one of the most famous action series of all time. Uh, my name is John Rambo. We served on the same team together in NAMM. I don't know if you ever talked about me. Number 3. Mean Girls. Based on Queen Bees and Wannabes by Rosalind Wiseman. You're like really pretty. Thank you. So you agree? What? You think you're really pretty? It started as a self-help book that focused on high school girls, the formation of cliques, and the aggressive behavior of the teens involved. Regina was dangling Aaron in front of me on purpose. I knew how this would be settled in the animal world. <laughs> Actress, writer, and comedian Tina Fey quickly noticed it. She then got in touch with Saturday Night Live producer Lorne Michaels, who got in touch with Paramount Pictures, and the rest is history. My name is Katie Heron. Talk to me again and I'll kick your ass. <laughs> Faye ended up writing a screenplay based on the 2002 book and her own high school experiences. It ended up becoming one of the best teen comedies of the 2000s and was noted for its great performances, sharp wit, and overall clever humor. That is so fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Number 2. Mrs. Doubtfire Based on Madame Doubtfire by Anne Fine Do you have any special skills? Oh, yes. I do. I I do voices. What do you mean, you do voices? An endearing story about a set of divorced parents and the lengths to which a father will go to be with his children. It's no surprise that this 1987 young adult novel earned several nominations for prestigious literary awards. You can't go now. When you have to. We're right in the middle of Charlotte's Web. The ensuing film's results, however, were even more successful than the author probably could have ever imagined. With several Academy and Golden Globe Awards, an unforgettable performance by Robin Williams in the titular role as the cross-dressing father and nanny, and entries on several lists as one of the funniest films of all time as some of its many achievements. Ah! Look at this! My first day as a woman, I'm getting hot flashes. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. What are you working on now? All 
Okay, How to think. lose a guy in 10 days. She's actually going to start dating a guy and then drive him away in a week and a half. <laughs> what are you doing in Signal Hill? We have oil and it seeps through the ground. Do you want to pay me to know well, where Just because there's something on the ground doesn't mean there's anything beneath it. Why did Standard Oil buy up land? I chose not to choose life. I chose something else. And the reasons? There are no reasons. Who needs reasons when you've got head on? Number one, Die Hard. Based on Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe. You don't like flying, do you? What gives you that idea? Bet you didn't see this one coming. It was in 1979 that Thorpe published his sequel to The Detective, the successful novel that became a box office triumph starring Frank Sinatra. We're both kind of set in our ways and everything, you know. Sure, but that's why we ought to do something about it while there's still time. The product, Nothing Lasts Forever, was praised as exciting and brilliant. When time came for the novel to become a film, the main character of Detective Joe Leland, changed to John McClane in the film series, was offered to the likes of Sinatra, Schwarzenegger, and Stallone, before going to TV comedy actor Bruce Willis. Welcome to the party, pal! However, thanks to this action flick, Willis became a megastar practically overnight, and a successful action film franchise was born. yippee mother Do you agree with our list? Why do you shamelessly waste my time like this? Which films were you surprised to see here? God damn you, take me! Take me! For more great top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Hey. Oh no, didn't anybody tell you? You were supposed to wear a costume. Oh, shut up.